Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the tiny room. Welcome back for the hundredth episode of Michael and Benjamin's podcast. Yay! <laughs> Today, I am the Michael of Michael and Benjamin's podcast, and I am joined by the man who has been to Hollywood. He has been to Redwood. He is the podcaster with the heart of gold. Is Benjamin? Oh, that's quite nice, actually. Yeah, oh, hundred nice. episodes. My juice soft. <laughs> Sorry about that. Also, though, Ben, Go on. because it's a hundredth episode oh, special, <laughs> I am joined by the man who is. He is to you. What wasps are to an enjoyable summertime picnic, it's Shane. Just a pain in the Hello. arse. <laughs> Some Ben will be engaging in an hour-long arm wrestle for this entire episode. <laughs> if you hear shaking of the table, that's what's going on. It's, it's, it's two men butting heads while I kind of moderate. <laughs> ben, do you want to, do you want for the hundredth time, do the bloody theme music? <gasps> theme music for the podcast. We don't actually have anything. But I hope someone will mix them up for us I don't want to name any names Rachel, I hope it's Rachel Yeah, still funny, very good, <laughs> excellent it was an extra effort one that actually kind of hurt my chest. It was 100, it's 100 episodes, <laughs> it's Ben. Quite painful. Um, ben, it's 100 episodes, but it's not really 100 episodes because, no. um, first of all, we split some episodes. We, we chopped and changed. We chopped and changed, and we didn't do. Look, it's 100 episodes. Just yeah. for a second. <laughs> it's like if you celebrate an anniversary with your wife. You know, you just pick a date. But not one of those awkward dates. You put your arm around her and you say, come on, let's get through this. Yeah, yeah what Ben's doing there is some meta humour, because Shane has his arm around me. <laughs> we're sharing a microphone, like a lovely old married couple. <laughs> Shane actually has the face of a man who's been married for about 50 years. He's just like... <laughs> oh, my wife doesn't listen to this, but... <laughs> I've been forced into int- intimacy for public my appearances. Wife once listened to this and she went, this is shite. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get her. Let's make this, let's make this whole fair. episode. This whole episode is now recriminations against Shane's wife. <laughs> Benjamin. Yeah. Speaking of things happening for the hundredth time, did you see the trailer for it? I've not seen it a hundred times. No. But I have seen it. I'll be honest with you, Michael, a bit too much naked granny for my likes now. A bit too much naked granny for my likes. Uh, anyone got any zingers there, Shane? Any naked granny based zingers? Uh, nah. Nah, um, that. Look Ben The one thing it did teach us Is that Old people are just as terrifying As children Extra terrifying If if, mm. if if not Of course Ben You immediately said Mick this is straight From the books Isn't it I didn't say that But are we doing it For the podcast Yeah Oh okay uh, Yeah Yeah I did say that Yeah It was straight From the books Ben Yeah Except Go on Shane I, I looked at the I looked at the trailer and said wouldn't it be more fun if they made a movie out of these other books the Dark Tower trilogy oh, no, we're series. not talking about the Dark Tower <laughs> are you a, exactly what makes sense are you are you a massive Dark Tower fan yeah. Shane? it's got cowboy hats yeah. <laughs> Ben do you remember last year's or was it a year before's abortive effort to start the uh, the Dark Tower with, with Mr. Matthew McConaughey as the, the wizard and Idris Elba, Elba as the gunslinger it's the worst thing Idris Elba has ever done Shane says I think we could do a whole podcast on the worst things Idris Elba has ever done. Um, 101. 101 episodes. 101 episodes. Um, yes, Ben. It is largely directly from the books. Ah. Because, I didn't Ben, know that. the thing, the, the major difference is in the books, Ben, when she gives her a cup of tea, it's a cup of poop. Well, I'm to be honest now, not only did I not enjoy the amount of granny, but I am grateful for the lack of poop in that trailer. Because, Ben, did you notice that when Beverly had a drink of the of the tea, she kind of made a face? Because it wasn't very nice tea. it wasn't very nice tea. Do you, you reckon, know, it, was, do you it, reckon was, it was yellow tea? No, it was poop. Oh, it was poop. Ah, yeah. okay, so it was still I there. I like tea anyway. Yeah, that's the, that's the face Shane makes when you give him normal tea. Because you're afraid there's poop in it. <laughs> <laughs> that explains so much. <laughs> um, could you explain who that old woman is, please? I was actually quite curious. Ben, in the book or in the movie? In, well, I'm assuming you're going to explain from the book because there's not much context given in the movie. In the movie, Ben, there is context. You just weren't listening. You were well, no, it's, it's the woman who took over Beverly's home and her father came to Derry many years ago. Yeah, and who is and her, her father? And her father is obviously the... So this is the in <laughs> not oh. that Derry. Oh. Derry, Maine. It, it is New England and it is named after that Derry. Uh. Because... 
like more fun if it was set in Northern Ireland and it, the real danger was being shot by somebody you thought was your neighbour. Oh, talking to the microphone, Shane. If you're going to say something controversial, <laughs> say it into the microphone. Say it clearly for everyone to hear. That's what um, always say. <laughs> no, it's based on a human. Is it something grey? Is it Alan Grey or something? Is that who it is supposed to possibly be? Yeah, but in the tr- clip that we saw, she's claiming to be like the daughter of someone who came to Derry as a clown it, the town came of Derry came to Derry as a clown yeah what the <laughs> what? big circus they were they were taken in by they big were, circus they were a travelling circus show yeah um, come on Derry Derry is named after the town in Maine Bangor which is also named after a town in Northern Ireland so Stephen King copied that you know Bangor the town in Maine and the town in Northern Ireland, and he said, "I have to make up a new town." So he copied another town in Northern Ireland and put it into. Suck the joy out of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good man. Um, no such thing as overanalyzing with Mick. No. Huh? In the book, she just is Pennywise. All right. Oh, okay, so it's just Pennywise. It's just Pennywise. It's Pennywise dressed up as an old lady. Okay, and he goes, "Oh, yeah, I'm horrible." Classic. <laughs> um, and do, does nobody die in Derry, or is that just a Pennywise wind up? I don't think that's a line from the book. Okay. I, I can't remember it exactly. Okay. Um but are they know. doing the the suicide arc in the new movie by the looks of things? It, it certainly looks that way. Okay. Are you doing a spoiler there Ben? Okay. I'm not really. I'm doing a spoiler for a book that came out 30 odd years ago. But yeah. People don't read books. Uh, that's true. Or speak into the microphone. It's because your head's in the way and it's massive. <laughs> Lumpen head, I think you'll find. If anyone would like to go through our Instagram there, you'll find some very witty repartee based on the size of mixed melon. Shane famously has a bigger head than me, yeah. but you, Ben, you're in a good uh, position to tell here. Considerably taller. I am going to be honest. It also looks a little bit more like a hammer. Mm, yeah. mm. Shark face. Shark face. That's what the lads down the flats call me. Oh, oh, throwing eggs at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot we get to revisit the fucking flat podcast. <laughs> Rats in the flats um, with the lads. What was I saying? Yeah, no. Um, people do die in Derry, but he it comes back 20, in 27 year cycles yeah, it's a 27 year cycle it's yeah. a 20 year seven. so that means that Jessica Chastain is 27 years older than whoever played young Beverly yeah but they, obviously they get it it's good that we get to see the, the young version of them again though they got to keep their contracts because yeah, they did, they did nice. such a good job on round one there'd be no point in getting rid of them I think they were filmed back to back weren't they were they I think, are they, they more than likely were Probably Bill Hader's doing very well for himself, isn't he? Yeah, a good casting choice, I feel. Yeah, good, good, good old Bill all Hader. around. Uh, Professor X looks a little bit yeah. out of place. Jimmy Mack, Paris. Yeah, he's just gonna, he's just gonna he blast. Looks a bit dynamic. Yeah, Bill in the book is bald, and has he's looking well. Yeah, as he, Jimmy Mack. Is Jimmy Mack? Jimmy McAvoy. Oh, Jimmy Mack. Jimmy Mack. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy um, Mack could be someone that you'd meet in Northern Ireland. Uh-huh. In Derry. He this owns is the local pub. This is we Jimmy Mack and I. So, lads, on the 100th episode, we are actually going to rebrand the podcast now. It's going to be a parody account where we actually take famous established concepts and set them in Northern Ireland. Yeah. So, stay tuned for our new YouTube channel. That would be brilliant. Star, Star Wars in Northern Ireland, there, Nate. Yeah, Star Wars in Northern Ireland. There, now. The, the, the cast of Derry Girls will be in every episode. Are, are you. Uh, <laughs> Are you a Catholic Jedi or a Protestant Jedi? <laughs> what was I saying? Yes, they are going to do the suicide thing, Ben. As you know, Ben, in the books, the book, the book, it's a single book. A book. The book is a lot less linear than the film. Yeah, it's very jumpy, backy, forthy. Exactly. Mm. And the book actually starts with the killing of a gay person in Derry in 1984. Oh, that's not good. But then the very next scene is Stan... Spoilers here. Stanley Urich, it's his suicide, is the very next scene in the book. Ah. So we meet adult Stan and he kills himself before we even hear about young Stan. Well, that's or, a bit sad, isn't it? Yeah, so he he's definitely going to be in it, but he'll probably be out of it Stephen pretty quickly. Stephen King wants to be certain that you have no hope in your life. Yeah. I think he that's really Stephen King's modus operandi, I think. Yeah. He, he lived a very dark life, Ben. We've talked about it before, I think. But His the, alcoholism the, and whatnot. The most famous scene in the book, which hopefully isn't going to make it into the new film, is the child God. gangbang in the sewers. Yeah, we'll have less of that, won't we? I, You'd put that on the top of the page. Like, if you were handing over a spec script to a studio and the top of the page reads, child gangbang in sewers, you can imagine the red pens coming out. Yeah. There's not enough coke in that room to make that get through. <laughs> 
Apparently there is though. Apparently there is though because yeah, it got through the bloody is. publishing process. Um, oh, publishing is different. Yeah. Publishing ah, you, like, you can have an old talk hang back in publishing lads. Yeah. As I said earlier no one reads books. <laughs> That's what this episode is called. Anyway look it'll be good. I'm looking forward to it. Historically Ben yeah. the best part of it is the bit with the kids. Yeah. Uh, and then the adults is a bit duller. Even the even the 1990s miniseries, the kids bit was much more interesting. I, I think what terrified me most about the trailer was the the fact that um, Pennywise sounds a little bit like Winnie the Pooh at the end of the trailer when he says "Hello." That's his thing. He's and a, I was like, "Oh, didn't didn't like that. Made me made me uncomfortable." Mm. Are you scared of Winnie the Pooh? Oh, I am now, uh, as a result of the trailer. Um, I they've kind of ruined their monster, though. It's a classic thing of well, we know who Pennywise is now and. Well, it's that's the thing scary. as well. Like, do we know who Pennywise is, Ben? In the book, Pennywise is a ancient celestial being. Yeah, and his enemy is a giant space turtle, which oh, Terry Pratchett Stephen used. Yeah. No, well, Terry Pratchett used all that in his uh, stuff as well. Discworld is on the back of a giant turtle called Atuin. Atuin is a common Lovecraftian trope. Space turtle. Space turtle. Space turtle man. Giant space turtle. Here. Terry Pratchett was just a bit of a know-all. Oh, enjoy the books. All right, settle down now. Yeah, just, just take it. take it easy, there, chief. Okay. Just say it. Take it easy. Too smart and smug. I once had the honor like of someone sitting across the table from me. Oh, so Mick is on your side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> He's got you, Shane. <laughs> Mick is also smug. I am quite smug. Um, anyway. Look, everyone, shut up for a second. <laughs> it's a tiny room full of massive egos. So. Yeah. <laughs> we've gone. We've gone over our allotted time to talk about it. My ego's bigger than yours, though. <laughs> I'd say that's probably true. (laughs) Your head is smaller, though, so that's fine. Um, Look, listen. Spider-Man. Is he far from home? Where is he? What's he doing? Uh, No, they've gone and and screwed the pooch, haven't they? Uh, Multiverse theory. What a load of bollocks. Ah, look, Ben. Don't be so jumping to immediate negativeness. No, well, this is how they're doing the TV series. It's definitely how they're rolling out their TV series. Uh, do you, uh, is this an insider information, Ben? No, or are you but just it's being all a, these. I'm just being a know all. Um, a, bit of a bit of a beard neck. <laughs> bit of a. Oh, am I? Oh, oh God! Pull it in. Pull it in. Reel it back. Pull it in. Reel it back. Reel it back. Uh, no, I reckon because we're messing around with timey wimey alternate university stuff, we, we, this might be how we roll out all our. This is the universe where Steve Rogers has found happiness. Yeah, but we're also gonna how we're gonna do our uh, do Black Steve Widow Rogers series. Found a penis. <laughs> it's also <laughs> fuck. Um, it's also going to do our Black Widow series. It's Black Widow's a our movie, low, Ben. Lo- oh, is it a movie? Yeah. Oh, possibly how we're going to do that. Um, because once we open up multiverses, do whatever we like. Possible. Do whatever we like. Ben, look, shut up for a second. Yeah, go on. Tell us first, who even is Mysterio? Mysterio is Quentin Beck. I think we've done this before. I think we've done a who even is Mysterio before. But um, it's the 100th episode. We're, we're bound to do a yeah, it's couple throwbacks. of read-arounds. It's throwbacks. It's like Avengers. This is the Avengers Endgame of podcasts. Mm-hmm. Everything's exactly. going to reference Everything's back. cyclical. It's a, it's a victory wank. Um, yeah. Uh, so we're, <laughs> we're going to do that again. Quentin Beck it was an illusionist from Hollywood. Um, he was a bloody fairly failed illusionist he, got, he lost his job out and so he, he turned to a life of crime um, Shane for those that can't actually see because Nobody podcasts are a, an audio, audio. medium uh, pulled an imaginary coin from behind my ear yeah um, like, a young, like an illusion like, like an illusion like a young Quentin Beck like a young Quentin Beck can you um, imagine if Quentin <clears throat> Beck was like David Blaine and was just shit and mopey I think he is. He, he oh. is. That's that's who he is. Is he? So there yeah. you go. Um, Fuck. Fun sake. fact: David Blaine actually read those comics when he was younger. He's like, oh, "I'll just be that." Is that true? Um, no, it's not. No. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. So anyway, failed illusionist, and very much like what we're seeing in the trailer. Originally, set himself up as a hero um, who was actually causing the the calamities he fought. So um, a lot of people are now. There's a lot of debate on the on the internet. Pardon. One chosen by super villain. Yeah, kind of, kind of that. Yeah, um, and much like uh, the internet is now debating, it's like people are like the producers are. No, no, he's going to be his ally in this movie, and everyone's like, uh huh, sure he is. He's a baddie. Sure he is. He's going to be a baddie from start to finish. It's his fault that all these things are running around. It's um, not his fault that all these things are running around, Ben. I suspect he has actually created them. Yeah, he might be letting them loose. Also, maybe the multiverse theory isn't a thing. There maybe you this go. is a thing that Quentin's, you know, going about saying like, "Oh, the the snap caused a, a rift, and I'm actually here to to help from the rift." Yeah, but maybe he's not from a rift or an alternate universe. Maybe he's just a prick. Maybe he's just a prick. 
<laughs> I always jump to the maybe he's just a prick thing first, yeah. not the okay universe <laughs> explanation. That, is, uh, that would be that would belie your your occupation, though. That, that would be <laughs> realistically the core difference between you and Ben. Yeah. <laughs> ben assumes that it's bad writing that's going to upset you, and you assume it's just someone's being a prick. <laughs> someone's just being a prick. Um, yeah. So Ben, he, I don't think he is from a multiverse. I think he's just that show the alternate universe, but that's probably just special effects. Could just be really good special His effects. Powers probably don't do anything those green lasers the green lasers that he shoots don't do anything to anything other than the monsters that he has created to be affected by his green lasers Mm. you know it's gonna be interesting Mm. so ideally spider-man's going to defeat him in the end with but a single punch i was wondering if they're going to do a very tragic uh surrogate tony stark moment where peter warms to him and takes him on as a new kind of surrogate tony stark because he doesn't have him anymore and he's gonna get his heart broken because he's gonna realize oh He's just a bit of a prick. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's probably most likely what's yeah, going to happen. It's going to be sad. I assume my mentors are just a bit of a prick. Yeah. Yeah. That's Again, we... fundamental difference yeah. between you and Spider-Man. <laughs> um, <laughs> that and the size of the head. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Tom Holland has a suspiciously small head. He he's does. got a suspiciously small body. He's, he's quite a slim man. He's a tiny little fellow. Tiny. He's tiny. Like tiny little child English. child playing at being an adult. Yeah. But in fact, an adult playing at being a child. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but um, you know he is the closest in age to a Spider-Man that any of the Spider-Man. He's also the most comic accurate in terms of body type. Is he? He looks it, no? Nah, I think he's too ripped. He's too ripped. Yeah. See, I'm basing my Spider-Man on the animated series where Spider-Man was. Oh, he was buff, and, bit of a tank. Yeah, it was fairly built. Tobey Maguire, yeah, big adult. Oh, man. speaking of Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, the bloody screenwriter died there yesterday. Yeah, ninety-two. Alvin, Al- oh, he's grand. Uh, Alvin Dennett. Alvin wow. Dennett. Very old fashioned name, Alvin yeah. Dennett. Ninety two. He was grand. Well, let's let's not leave a comment underneath if you've ch- called your child Alvin. Yeah, if you're inspired by the podcast, call your child Alvin or Bennett. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> um, hey Ben, leave him alone. <laughs> Jesus, I just died. Um, the man, it's Alvin Dennett. By the way, it's oh, D. Alvin Dennett. Okay, <laughs> it's not even Alvin Bennett. It's Dennett. Yeah, Dennett, come here. Ben, we'll bring Bennett back. Ben, shut up for a second. Do you think it's a coincidence that all of Peter's friends, 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 friends were also snapped, so none of them are five years older? It's just convenient writing. Yeah. Mm. Look, you can do whatever hey. you want. Post that. Like, it's like you said, post snap. We can just play around now. You just, just have fun now. Post snap. Just vibe with it. Just, 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 just have fun with it. If I, if I was Tom Holland and I was being the first, the the final movie in your twenty two Infinity Saga movie collection. Yeah. I'd be shitting it. I'd be like, oh man, the big boys are gone. Like, there's no big thing we're building towards. Like, he is possibly carrying it forward. Yeah, him. It's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> it's him, Chadwick, and Soft Cheese. That's. It's tough. Yeah. <laughs> That's not fun. Yeah, he's, look, he's being well re- paid for it. I know, he'll be he'll grand. Be right. He'll be all right. He made a mint and he's having the time of his life. He's yeah. easily one of the most likable of the the cast when it comes to press and work and press and stuff like that. He's, he's like a young Robert Downey Jr. He's he's very good at, at charming the fans. He'll have to go through his drugs man phase. Yeah, that'll be a shame. Um, him and um, Zendaya are very good at, at, at working a crowd. Mm. Very good at She's taller than him, though. She is. And you know how I feel about couples where the lady is taller than the man. Uh, you're intimidated by it and you'll never do it? I'm against it. Okay, fair enough. Intimidated by it and never do it. Yep. Fair enough. It's just, it's bad breeding policy. Speaking of... Oh, fuck. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Welcome to Eugenics Weekly. You said, yeah. <laughs> you said he wouldn't fucking do this. Oh, yeah. on the I, I have not very little control over him, Ben. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, taller ladies and shorter men, uh, Game of Thrones is choking along nicely. <laughs> that was a good segue. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> so last week they managed to kill yet another person of colour. Yeah, did we're they? just getting rid of them. Oh, they, <laughs> just, did, just, yeah. they did. Wrapping up all those loose ends. So For that, no reason other than to piss off the white lady. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. this friend you had What's going on there. Technically, her poor, boss. Poor yeah, L. Kill her. Poor yeah. L. Grey Worm. Like fucking. Yeah, poor yeah. Grey Worm. Look, it was a weird episode. It wasn't was. great. It felt like it could end at about five different points yeah. throughout it. It was too long. All of the episodes now, like I used to have, you'd get up and you'd have a tight at forty-five minutes because it followed that hour with tight breaks. forty-five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Now you just press play and you don't know when it's going to end. You have to wait and it could see. Be two hours later. It's because they're Russian. 
No, I think they're American mostly. Oh. Some of them are even Northern Irish. Oh, really? Up and yeah, <laughs> Up and <there> now. <laughs> We can't really parody Game of Thrones in Northern Ireland. It's already done that itself. Yes. Um. The internet has truly, truly turned against it. Oh, it's just oh the internet's had enough. Yeah. It's it's bizarre. And a lot of people are just doing their, this is why it doesn't work. I've read so many Reddit posts this week yeah. where it's like, this is why they fucked it up. Oh, and it's it's like, so mm. stupid. You've had however many seasons of building up uh, Daenerys as this great liberator. Get closer to Mick. Just hug him. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now she's just in the space of two episodes going a bit mental and a bit evil she's a bit of a bitch now isn't she yeah. it's a slow or not slow very quick decline into being a bit mental and a bit evil the yeah. rapid snap well yeah. they have killed all her friends off yeah. Yeah. and two of her everyone's friends off and George two of her George Martin is too obsessed with real life yeah <laughs> and two of her telling a good and entertaining story I don't know. I think the problem is that they've gone, they've left George R. R. Martin. I think, I think they've no, left it too far behind. The sooner you left George R. R. Martin, no, the better. No, disagree. I think every single fan on the internet disagrees with you as well. That doesn't matter. That makes me right. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. The internet is more dumps. Fair enough. No, but... It, Not you, dear <clears throat> listeners. No. Not you. The people on the internet listening to this great bunch of lads. Uh, <laughs> but for, the, for the hundreds, for the tens of people, for the... For the fives of people listening to this, you're all right. And the Chinese. Great they're bunch of lads. lads yeah, they're all right. <laughs> um, but I think it's because George R. R. Martin built those characters quite well. Did he fuck? Uh, uh, Did you just say, did he fuck? <laughs> I'd, I'd say he does fuck. I'd say there's a couple of people that were on George R. R. Martin. Um, but now those characters aren't lasting. Like I think one of the big bones that people have to pick with it is, is Tyrion because he's changed his character so much he's not intelligent anymore he's kind of just there to make Sarky drunken comments now um, I have found that I think the ideal scenario was taking a George R. R. Martin who is very long winded filling a sock full of coins and beating him with it yes but the the key to the success of the series was taking those long-winded, not incredibly entertaining books and filtering and refining them into a TV series. That was the success yeah. of this. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's just a TV series. Yeah. It's not a TV series which is a filtered down highlights of a relatively entertaining book series. It's just a TV series. It's very generic now. Mm. Um, it's it's plots and it's twists and it's turns aren't really there anymore they're exactly what you would expect from yeah. a TV series yeah I would much rather somebody sat down and talked about you know how a 10 year summer works for crop cycles no that's in the book that is that is in the book is it? yeah he he takes care of all that I've lost interest very he very loves stuff like you see he used to masturbate to Tolkien like he's got a whole thing for long the new movie arc- <laughs> <laughs> he's probably tugging himself off that the Tolkien estate has completely disowned that at least just someone like, went nah, to see want nothing to do with it nah at least someone went to see it I don't think anybody <laughs> else did <laughs> yeah, it's just George R.R. Martin throwback to Mick talking about his time working in a cinema where Ooh. he used to throw people out for doing that oh before. no did I tell that story on yeah, the podcast yeah you did yeah. Oh, good. Good. you, you can't help right. but tell that story it's one of my favourite stories <laughs> it's probably one for some reason um, where do you think it jumped the shark because I'm, I'm not a Game of Thrones mega fan at all I've been keeping up with this season due to outrage because I enjoy I think outrage. season 6 was the last solidly good season Okay, season 7 had so much momentum and movement and things happened in season 7 that George R. R. Martin I suspect would never have done do you remember when SEAL Team 6 went north of the wall yes yeah. Uh, oh with the dragons about, deus ex machina the whole thing well talked to them about a day and a half and talked the raven gets to them in all of that. I don't think George R. R. Martin would have written a scene where all your favourite characters team up yeah. and go on a mission. Yeah. It's not realistic. It's not real yeah. world. It's not George R. R. Martin. I think that's... It's fan service. Although that was great fun, it was the kind of beginning of the end, I think, of quality writing on the series. Yeah. It's also when... It's when characters started changing. It's when Sansa suddenly became... Uh, little finger too yeah yeah and little fingers oh, the way the internet was outraged when sansa was like 
all of that rape and turned me into a big bird. Not yeah, they're not happy about that. Oh, the internet went fucking yeah. stark mad about that. They're not happy about not that. Stark, very good. Uh, uh, stark Raven as well, Bran. No, I didn't mean that one. Oh. Thanks, though. <laughs> it's very good, though. Yeah, it was good. Uh. But yeah, I can't imagine George R. R. Martin writing uh, uh, Seal Team 6 goes north of the wall, gets rescued by dragons and... Uh, that just didn't that's when it became a generic fantasy series yeah. rather than the Game of Thrones yeah fair enough yeah it wasn't look I've never been all that into it but it's it's odd to see I think people are quite annoyed at how poor it's become yeah but when you are in charge of Game of Thrones now you can fire the writers scribble notes on the back of a beer mat and know that because people have invested so much time and energy and will just want to trash it on the internet anyway they'll tune in your yeah, you, your ratings are grand. Yeah. Well, the ratings are the. I don't know if the ratings are going down. The critical reception is definitely going down. Oh, critical reception has gone through the toilet. But they I don't think anybody cares about Men critical. Of Tala and make him game, the king of the Game of Thrones. And, the king of the Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just wrap it up in the next episode. And just a completely new character that nobody predicted. <laughs> That'd be fucking amazing. Oh, yeah, lads. Lord Ben. <laughs> that's that's my chair there. Can you yeah. hoosh? <laughs> And that'd be fine. Yeah. Not for the critical reception, but it would certainly do it for just wrapping it up in a nice, neat little bow with a short series done. Yeah. Sure, look. People still watch it. I don't care who wins now. Yeah, I, I don't care ben. who wins at all. Yeah, I hope it's Ben. I hope it's me. Yeah. Yeah. Ben, 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 Ben's of Thrones. Ben, yeah, okay. Game, Game of Ben's. Game of Ben's, I think, Game is probably better. Yeah. Look, that's enough of that. Yeah. Ben. Yeah. Shane and I. The two of you. The two of us. Both of you together. We are both of us together. And Shane's wife. This is like the beginning of one of those stories. You know <laughs> um, the two of us together and Shane's wife, we went to see a film. I was actually about to say, if it's set in cinema, I'm very weird given the story that you just told. But yeah, uh, no, we, we oh. went together then. We invited you. I didn't go. But you were like, fuck you guys. <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> that's, that's not what I said, but okay. But then the film we went to see was a film probably more of your generation than of our generation. Almost definitely. We went to see Pokemon. What, what's it called? Detective Pikachu. Is it called Pokemon Detective Pikachu or just Detective Pikachu? I think it's just called Detective Pikachu. The title card of the film said Pokemon Detective Pikachu. But did it say Pokemon in a tiny little... No, it said no? Pokemon full Detective on, Pikachu. Full size, yeah. full size Pokemon. So it could be he's a Pokemon detective yeah, or it could be he's Detective Pikachu. It, it, and like he was referred to as a Pokemon detective throughout the movie so yeah could be anything right so it could be like it could be like uh, uh, son of a bitch Shane <laughs> Pokemon detective Pikachu we can't call him that to his face that's what we say in the production means it's alright Grant <laughs> <laughs> whispering doesn't doesn't it's gonna be a silent patch there for the listeners we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a we're gonna do a, a new ASMR podcast on no the we're not <laughs> Two men in the nude. Mick is gonna, Mick is gonna eat stuff. So over ben, that. Look. Two men in the nude. Transforming anyway, transforming transformers. Yes. Um, detective pleasures. That'd be fucking great. We'd make a mint. Ben, um, ben, tell us about what even is Pokemon. What even is Pokemon? Well, Pokemon started out as a, a tiny little Game Boy game way back in the early nineties. Um, Do the music. Oh, hang on. And then I can't remember the rest of it. I wanna be the oh, very be the best. Actual, the, the like no one ever was. Do 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 do. If Pokemon to understand to train them is my cause. Pokemon. I don't know the words. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> Much better than I thought it would go. Started as a game, then became the series that we I all. I will grew travel up across the land with searching far and wide. Do 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 do. Each Pokemon. To understand the power that's inside Pokemon. Sorry, that's I got very fucking loud. <laughs> so to. I didn't watch much of it. Was it actually <laughs> an allegory for slavery? Yeah, Ben. No, dog fighting oh. is perfectly okay in the world of Pokemon. I'm going to answer that. Honestly. Something that would rub you the wrong it. way. No, I'm going to answer that honestly because I don't know if everyone knows this. Do you know this? In the in the Japan, it was common for kids. Japan has a lot of beetles. Lar- ah. large beetles and it was quite common for kids to collect insects and put them in a little thing and like make them fight that's messed up and it's not really they're like they, they don't have the ability to damage each other really like it would be two stag beetles and they'd win by turning each other over okay so and it's not like just, necessarily ripping they, they wouldn't they wouldn't rip like them apart. Really shit robot horse. yeah 
Yeah, like that. And oh. then uh, in the early, then the, lots of toy designers started making toys based around that concept, like little robotic Yeah, the Transformers. And, uh, no, not the Transformers. Little ro- robotic, no, it's not. It's Transformers. It's not the Transformers. It's not. It's not the Transformers. It's not the Transformers, Ben. It's it's not the Transformers. No, it's insect Transformers. No, it's not. There are insect Transformers, the Insecticons, but See, they're not. I just said that. It's no. the insect Transformers. Oh, I'm going to sing even more loudly. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's where it comes from. Oh. Huh. Yeah. And then they made the monsters, pocket monsters. Yeah. Pocket monsters, eh? Monsters. So it's 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 about Japanese. Children collecting insects rather than than slavery. Yeah, well, um, it's bloody weird. It's um, yeah. it, it you know you're pitting animals against each other and you're electrocuting them, <laughs> drowning they're them. A bit more sentient than animals. Yeah, that's the thing. Like they're yeah. they're proper sentient. Like uh, sorry, very self aware. Can, can we do a quick spoilers here? Is it explained why Ryan Reynolds' Detective Pikachu is so sentient and aware? And yes, but we'll get to that in a minute. Yes. Okay, fair enough. First of all, Shane. Tell us what you thought about the film. Yes, please. Or tell us, give us like a summary, a non-spoiler summary of what the film is about. That would be good. The film was an enjoyable romp for a man who wasn't a fan of Pokemon and doesn't know what any of them do. Ooh. So, like when... The one with the big tongue. Yeah, what well, happens you. when one of them comes over and licks you or another Lick-a-tongue. one squirts water. And you're like, was that one of their powers or is that unusual? And you look around <laughs> the cinema and everyone's like, no, that's all right. You're like, oh, okay. None of that made any sense to me. Yeah. Um... But then, yeah, Ryan Reynolds kind of carried it. It'll he does that a lot. <laughs> it'll be, I don't know if the, you know the way there's like an actor in every country that does the voice for various English actors when the movie translate? Yeah. In other countries, is the actor as charismatic as Ryan Reynolds is in English? Oh, yeah. I'd say there's... Because if he's not, that movie's going to suffer. Mm. Really? Yeah. Okay, it's that kind of movie. It, it's mostly Ryan Reynolds quipping. Yeah. I wonder how dared, I wonder if they'll get the same voice actor who... Who uh, dubs Deadpool? They would almost have to. I'm yeah, I think there are a couple of actors around the world in different countries who are like, "Oh, I'm I'm the Dutch Ryan Reynolds." Hello, I am the Dutch Ryan Reynolds. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm here today. I'm going to tell. Oh my God! Look at my testicles. <laughs> uh, I have to jump and fight these super villains, but my testicles have to come out of my underpants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> ten out of ten would watch. <laughs> yeah, Dutch pool coming to cinemas near you. <laughs> Definitely. You know we're gonna have to do a dub now, a super cut with a W doing <laughs> Ryan Reynolds lines sold. Hundred yeah. episode extravaganza. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, so that was enjoyable. Uh Ryan Reynolds. Some storyline happens. There's some bright colours. Yeah. Different Pokemon do different Pokemon things. That's There's good. Several explosions. Uh, mild peril, I'd say. Very mild peril. Very mild peril. Very Not mild high peril. stakes. This no. is... Nobody really gets in any way seriously hurt. Oh, no. good. This is a lot more than I thought it was going to be, Shane, going in a kid's film. Yeah. It's a kid's film, Ben. Good. The presence of Orion Reynolds. Be. Yeah, it should be. You're right. But the presence of Orion Reynolds... American Ryan Reynolds, not Dutch Ryan Reynolds. Canadian Ryan Reynolds. Canada is part of America. Yeah. Um, uh, fancy uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, the presence of Ryan Reynolds, the fact that it's live action, and the the dark and gloomy neon futuristic postmodern Blade Runnery setting. Nice. All might combine together to give you the impression that this was a Pokemon film for adults. Right. It's a it's it's a kids film. Oh. Definitely a kids film. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's a kids film. Like Ben, and I'm looking at you when I say this. If you wanted to catch some children, like the child to fight each other, ah, like a Pokemon catcher, but for children, this is the film you'd go to. <laughs> you'd lure them. We saw it in recliner seats, Ben. Very nice. Because recliner seats are my favorite marketing innovation of the last ten years. They're genius. Absolute genius. Great no idea. one wanted to sit at the front. Sitting at the front is shit. Yeah. They couldn't sell those seats to save them, their lives. So they took them all out and put in gimmicky seats and then charge more to sit at the front. Marketing genius. Very exclusive. Absolute brilliant. Was it comfy? You get all the joy of watching a film lying down with the added health risk of eating sweets lying down. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Quite a lot of choking risk. Yeah, swallowing doesn't work as well when you're when you're laying your back. Come on, teleport. <laughs> Come on, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no. As a, as an avid fan of the uh, 
of the lying down genre. <laughs> I don't know where I can save myself from this one. So yeah. I'm just going to sit here in silence now and... Uh, yeah, but look, it's a kid's film. Go, There's very mild peril. It is, I think, a sequel to the first Pokemon movie. Because, well, spoilers from this point on. Well, the trailer spoiled it. Mewtwo is in it. Mewtwo is in it. It opens, the opening scene is Mewtwo escaping from a laboratory. Again. 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 Right? It's a very similar scene to Mewtwo escaping from a laboratory in the first Pokemon movie. Okay. And I thought, this is going to be a remake. But with mm. with uh, Justice Smith instead of... Is he a Smith? Is he part of the Smith dynasty? Oh, no, I don't think so. No. Okay, no, I was I just curious. So. Um, it seems like a very Will Smith name to give a child. It did. Does, I, yeah. I kept expecting Will Smith to show up in the film. Or yeah. Will Smith's wife. Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah, Jada. she did that r- Jaden. rant about Will Smith not winning an Oscar. Oh, she does that a lot. Yeah. They, but they're like, a very... One of the most fascinating things I find... He has a YouTube channel now. Yeah. They are a very saccharine sweet family. They're quite irritating. They go on about, you know, excellence in parenting and stuff like that and really pat themselves in the back quite a lot. Like, oh. they're very tough to watch. Not what I expected from Will Smith but she is very much you know the proud yeah. mother bear kind of thing I and she it very strange to argue that Will Smith should have won an Oscar it's I don't like think shit. he should have he's not shit he's nice. very good in a certain type of role but he's not Oscar worthy in anything what was she arguing he should have won an Oscar for I concussion I think it was Ali Ali okay yeah or about, concussion it could have been concussion been, yeah. what was concussion it's called shit. was it called concussion yeah that's what it's called what was it I was trying to be glib no no it was called concussion mm. Yeah, it's it's what you'd expect from a from a Will Smith movie. It's anyway, a bit ben, on the nose. look, um, yeah, very kids film. The villains, though. yeah. Like if you had a child and you had to go to the cinema with them, you could do far worse than sitting through this. But mm. she didn't have a child with you. Well, you didn't get me. one for the occasion. No, but Mick. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's of wonder. I enjoyed it. Close enough. Look, ben, you need Jim for that though. Very, very, mm. uh, mm. very twisty. Lots Turny? of twists, twists and turns. It's turny. Some of the twists and turns, Ben, take quite a lot. They take a leap of faith, a leap of not fate, a leap of what's the word? Credulity. Credulity. You you have to suspend your disbelief. They for jump a lot the shark. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. No, no, they jump the shark, Ben. Jump the shark is the thing about the television series. So you need you need to suspend your disbelief. Okay, a yeah. lot. it's a kids' movie. Well, about we're going, Pokemon. About Pokemon. We'll go into spoilers disbelief a little bit, Ben. Really be the big yeah, because you have to answer something for me. Yes. Ryan Reynolds. Yes. What is he? So, the, here so spoilers. Spoilers. We're going into spoilers now. Ben, it's up to you to decide if I've made this up or if this is true. Okay. Um, so, Bill Nye. The science the, guy? No, Bill Nye. The vampire? Yeah, he talks like that. Oh, yeah. Bill Nye. No, that's not how he pronounces it. It is. It's Bill Nye. It isn't. Ooh. Antor Deck. Uh, he is a Pokemon scientist. Good. Who has hired a noted Pokemon scientist, Rita Ora, Ooh. to... Uh, to clone, to generate a special serum from uh, Mewtwo, which enrages Pokemons. No, it's not a handy J. Uh, it's a special gas that enrages Pokemons so that Bill Nighy can have Rita Ora make him a special device that will allow him to mind control Mewtwo and then use the special gas combined with Mewtwo's psychic powers to combine people with their Pokemons. So Ryan Reynolds is a detective who discovers this plot is afoot, but gets attacked by Bill Nye's special Pokemons. And Mewtwo has to save him by merging him into his Pokemon's body. So the Pikachu is the main character's dad. No, you figure out what of that was real. Okay, so Rita Ora is definitely in it because Shane said Rita Ora downstairs. Or <laughs> Shane brings or, Rita Ora into almost yeah, every or, conversation. You're using it because he said Rita Ora downstairs and it's fresh in your mind. So that's tricky, <laughs> first of all. Second of all, you said the word combined too many times. Right. About four times in a yeah, minute. Right. Um, I'm going to say... Yeah. That it's not his dad? That the Pokemon, the Pikachu is not the main character's dad. It's not his dad, but it is somebody's consciousness merged with the Pikachu. Right. The gas part controlling thing, I didn't quite understand. So if you make... Is Rita Ora aware of being manipulated by Bill Nye, the science guy? Rita Ora, I think, is evil. 
but not sexy evil. No, just standard just evil. Kids movie. Kids movie. Yeah. yeah. There's almost a sexy evil henchwoman. Almost. 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 She's got like pink latex gloves. Yeah. That's what you're into. Team yeah, Rockety kind of not Jesse quite from Team Rocket. A little bit, but yeah. she's just in a, a sexy business suit. Nice. And a high heel. With some gloves. With some gloves and some glasses. Um, Yeah, okay, so what else do we have there? Um, He, I gather he probably stumbled upon the plot. Right. No, no, he's a detective. Uh, Yeah, but he... He didn't stumble upon it. But he found it, okay. He he deduced it. He was actually hired as part of it and then realised it was evil. I couldn't figure out whether he was... Like a private detective? Or he was a, a police, Pokemon detective. Police detective? He was a Pokemon detective. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I, keep I saying it. I take it that it's not his dad because surely he'd recognise his dad's voice. He's estranged from his dad. Oh. Well, then, I don't know. I, I don't know what's a lie. It sounds all possible. Say because that, but with more drama in your voice. <laughs> Then I give up. Because <laughs> it's all true. Yeah. That's the plot of the film then. <laughs> That's mad. Ryan Reynolds is his dad. That's fucking And mental. he's the Pikachu. The Pikachu is his dad. Does Ryan Reynolds get his bodies back? Yeah, at the end. They spend so much time, like every memory he has, the dad's face is blacked out or is in shadow. Or every time they look at a picture, just as he scans across to the face of his father, it cuts away. And early on, there's just for no good reason. That clip from Home Alone, you know, the TV show or the movie. Angel- you felt the animal. Yeah, <laughs> that's playing yeah. the TV. So I had this wild hope that Macaulay Culkin would show up. As That'd be amazing. Dad, and then he didn't. Oh. Ryan Reynolds. I, was all right. I thought it was going to be Will Smith. I don't know why. I thought it was going to be Will Smith. I think they played a little bit on our racial uh, expectations. Bias. Yeah. yeah there, so that was kind of a, a neat little twist. Yeah. That uh, Ryan Reynolds was his dad. Also, you don't really think about Ryan Reynolds as being old enough to have adult kids, but he is. He is, yeah. He's 44 or something. Yeah. He, he could, could have an adult kid. Easily. Yeah, yeah. He's been knocking around, for a long, knocking around for a long time. Anyway, while you were at Pikachu, <laughs> yes. I was at my mother's birthday. Yes. Ooh, tell it, us about the colour palette. It was very good. It was well written. It was a light blue and it was a consistent theme throughout. Um, a lot of references to the number 60. Third because she problems? was 60. Uh, uh, look, Big CGI the bag. writing got a bit sloppy when we got to got to the third act. I think the writers might have been drunk. <laughs> possibly. Big grey villain. Um, yeah, the waiter was a bit of a knob by the end. Mm. Um, Where'd you go? Carluccio's. Where's that? In town, on Dawson Street. Oh, Carluccio's. Yeah, the, the, the Italian, Italian place. place. Oh, yeah, that's quite nice. So, um, great old birthday. Great old birthday. Happy birthday, Brenda. Um... She never, she never listens to the podcast. Um, <laughs> certainly not up to this point. Does not, does not support the podcast. Ben, um, um, when you go to an Italian restaurant with your parents, do you show off your Italian skills? I do not. Do you go, now, mother and father, this is a Carluccio. This is a kind of Italian... Des- Let me or Una Carluccio, por favore. <laughs> My favourite part about the, uh, the, the twist... In, yeah. in the birthday was my mother tried to be a proud Irish mother and say that I had spent time in Italy oh, to which the waiter said ah, I am from Malaga <laughs> <laughs> in Spain which was which was just a wonderful twist great cameo from noted Mexican actor Miguel Good. Oh, Miguel and the waiter's name was actually Miguel I'm not being racist <laughs> um, but uh, yeah very good very good um, not a kids movie not no. a kids not movie adult scenes yeah. uh, some adult serious scenes serious peril yeah. Uh, but for quite a bit of peril salty language but we got saltiest of languages um, inexplicable nudity inexplicable like nudity Miguel just couldn't good. keep his clothes on you know Shane we were talking about this last week were we about we? Uh, unne- no unnecessarily Certainly sexy 80s movies <laughs> Certainly not on the pod <laughs> um, that was something that Pokemon was lacking though wasn't it gratuitous couple- nudity no a sexy villain oh. or just a sexy person yeah. very yeah. not sexy but deliberately so because it's a kids, it's kids, it's a kids movie but even have you seen Scooby Doo oh the, the sexed up Scooby Doo oh yeah. god I, I, have you seen Scooby Doo Sarah, Sarah Michelle Sarah Geller. Michelle Geller and Linda Cardinelli it, it's bizarre it was written by James Gunn real sexed um, up and when James Gunn was saying where he made on Twitter yeah where he made Scrappy Doo the weird twist villain yeah but I mean, that oh, is a weirdly sexy kids' film. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's yeah. uncomfortable. And you don't get that anymore. Sexy film is weird. Lots of people go for that, though. There's a there huge is... community of people that are into sexy Velma. Sexy Velma, But yeah. there's a, a huge number of porn parodies for Scooby-Doo. 
it's because a lot of really, dirty old men grew up with it well yeah one it, a lot of dirty old men grew up with it and two it's really easy on the costume yeah yeah, yeah just an orange shirt Fair. yeah and your villain even if you're going to do a bit of a story in a villain did Skin also, Diamond play Velma in one of the porn parodies no, Scooby Doo no sense who's Skin Diamond Skin Diamond very sexy porn actress well she's retired now she has a singing career that's I mean I suppose if definitely you're going nowhere stuff oh yes. listen to I think goes by Raylene Raylan okay sure look we'll maybe look, look anyway yeah, um, the description below ben, no we won't there won't, be, <laughs> no. There won't no. be any links to the careers <laughs> of porn stars in the description below <laughs> look anyway lads look listen it's episode 100 it is so we decided for episode 100 to do a throwback to episode 1 we did do you remember it no <laughs> it had very poor audio quality I blocked it out yeah. and our, it took us three hours to record it took us three hours to record and it had terrible audio quality and we didn't know what we were doing um, Benjamin two though. kids having fun in two a small room yeah, it's it not fun anymore room. now though it was a bigger room then <laughs> just make ourselves do a podcast a big <laughs> echoey room <coughs> Benjamin we talked about Moon Knight Moon Knight and we predicted that uh, someone would do a Moon Knight series what do you think the chances of a Moon Knight series are in the current Marvel climate? Non-existent. Zero, you say? Um, I'm not going to say zero, zero. There's always a chance. Kevin Kevin acts the bollocks and he goes off and finds stuff sometimes and shoves it in. Mm. But we lost our <laughs> Netflix heroes. <laughs> we lost our Netflix heroes. Um, I thought he'd make a great addition to the, the Netflix Marvel universe. That's what we pitched, Ben. Yeah, it was, it was really good. Um, we were great at doing it. They should have hired us, but they yeah. didn't. So look, there's no use crying over spilt milk, Marvel, you pack of pricks. Um, <clears throat> but uh, now, I don't know. It's just, I don't see it popping up. I don't see him the, fitting in well with the, the Marvel universe. Look, the idea of fitting in well with the Marvel universe is starting to lose all coherence because, as you know, yeah. the the main Multiverse. movie the main movie universe has moved forward to twenty twenty three. Bollocks! Marvel, <gasps> get on. No, we'll, we'll do it because obviously that's what we're doing in the next part. We're going to keep all going. Right. I don't know what you mean, but uh, right. yeah, we'll get to it in a second. I'll Marvel's Agents of Shield is back, Ben. Fuck. <laughs> and Marvel's Agents <laughs> of Shield. Hang on, Agents hang on. Shield. We did a production meeting, yeah. dear listeners, yeah. downstairs. And not fucking once yeah. did we mention fucking Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. And I know this because in a rare turn of events, it's Shane and I completely agree and think it's, it's a giant flaming pile of shite. It's in my notes here, look. It's a terrible thing. Start. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Has been from day fucking one. Oh, Coulson back right there. dead. Would you it's, fuck off? It's Coulson. What's Coulson. the salty language? It's Marvel's Coulson. cash grab. Marvel's fucking dopey attempt at a fucking series. Um, anyway... Right, it's hard to follow up that bloody outburst. It wasn't in the production meeting. It, it was slipped in here. Here it in is, hundred meeting, like a young Ben late Cullity. in the game. I don't slip in. Like I get consent. Thank you very list, much. There is Moon Knight and several sub bullet, bullet points. Yeah, and then Mick is just scribbling <laughs> just Marvel's scribbling Agents of Shield. Marvel's Marvel's not even in the same pen color. It's here a blue it pen because you didn't take the same pen look up. Like Agents, it looks like Angels of Shield. Hey, oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, let's write that. That's much better. And said it in Northern Ireland. There's another anomaly coming through we better get some squads up there to have a look well, at it there get Nick Fury down there did he have anything to do with the boys back in the day during the troubles he was around then wasn't he I think it would be great if we had uh, Marvel's An- Angels of S.H.I.E.L.D. set in Northern Ireland or Bellicus Angel with uh, <laughs> like one of the guests or one of the kind of exotic characters is Dutch Ryan Reynolds <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you know, I'm not really understanding why all of you are always shooting at each other. <laughs> why don't you just show each other your balls? <laughs> anyway, look, what are we talking about? You yeah. were trying to talk about Agents, Agents of Shield. Fuck um, off. Agents of Shield has time skipped a year forward. Who cares? And no, hold on, this is relevant. It's well, not. It the, is. It's not relevant because most of us stopped watching about four years ago. So a time skip forward doesn't. I can't remember what year it was. <laughs> but that's the it point. It could be five or six years since Did I they bring Finn Coulson back? In, in, stop saying Coulson. It's Coulson. In, stop it. In, I'm genuinely getting annoyed now. <laughs> in, in, <laughs> what am I saying? In the last series, it ended when Thanos' ship was approaching Earth. But it didn't end though, it was still it, going. Yeah, but, no, that's where the season ended. And now it skipped a year forward and a year has passed, but the snap didn't happen. Are you saying that a Mitch's show... My face says, mind blown. Oh. My face and Ben's sake, face say, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> or that's what I expected of Marvel Agents of Shields because it's a shit show and doesn't know how to write. It's not a shit show. It's pretty good. It's but, um It's very disappointing because 
the whole point of the the Marvel Cinematic Universe, what they sold us on was it's all connected. It's only taken you six years to catch up to what Shane and I said when we watched the first episode. Which was? It's very disappointing. But the, you see, at least in those, the early episodes, they were, they were treading water waiting for Winter Soldier to happen. Because S.H.I.E.L.D. had to collapse for the plot of the season to begin. Okay. So, after that, it became kind of all right. It's never been the best show on television. It never will be. That's the first step. But. Come on, let it out, big guy. But. <laughs> come on. We're all here for you. We they've, care about they've, you. They've, they've, they've gone now. They've, they've ruined it. They, 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 just, just admit it was never very good. It was. It's, it. ne- it's, it's good. It. No, it, it is. It. it is good. On, Say it. Ghost Rider's in it. Let it out. Ghost Rider's in it. Ghost Rider's shite. They didn't even use the proper Ghost Rider. They used the fucking the new one who drives ghost. around in a car. Ben, you've never sounded more like a fanboy. <laughs> the proper Ghost Rider. <laughs> Come on! Don't no, look. No, this is we're here because we it's care about you. I'm putting a stop to this now because everyone's getting to go, starting to upset me. <laughs> it's taken a hundred episodes to get you here. We can stop the pre- moonlight. <laughs> Very sorry, this. Somebody on the commute to work has just turned that. Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Moon Knight. We watched the fan film. It was all right. Paradox films. You two talk about. It. I'm done. Oh. <laughs> go. So we watched. The fan film. <laughs> The main character who was, as far as I know, I've never read a comic, uh, playing Moon Knight, uh, seemed to think he was bigger than he actually is. He was a big guy. He was, but he's not terrifyingly big or anything. Well, Moon Knight shouldn't be. Like, I think I could have taken him. You might have. Um, the I always thought, I always saw Moon Knight as being a bit more lithe than athletic. Than yeah, he's, he's, a sm- he's a smooth operator. Yeah. Um, he certainly doesn't take pipes to the chest or to the head or planks to the back as if it's nothing. Ah, look, let's um, let's let's not just go straight to the negative. Okay, look, okay. we we uh, we have always um, been big fans of Moon Knight here at the podcast. It was how episode number one got going. We did it now a pitch, exactly. um, and they did nothing that we suggested we would do, um, and that's fair enough. It was, Good, but they actually did it. They actually <laughs> they actually got up off their asses and did something. So yeah. that's that's fair enough. Um, Bit of an well, I would say question there. What, is it better to have a good idea and do nothing with it, or a shit idea and do something with it? I don't think it was a shit idea. It something was, that I want to really highlight about this is we've upset Mick so much that he's rain manning with a transformer in his hand yeah. now and putting it together to soothe himself. It's transforming. It's not rain manning. I think the behavior is called stimming. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's where um, somebody with clear emotional needs like Mick uh, sort of self smooths by just performing something repetitive. Yeah. So anyway, that's happening now. That's fun. Um, Look, in terms of production quality and cinematography, probably one of the better fan films that I've seen on YouTube. Mm. Um, In terms of writing and narration, it seems to think that it's an early 90s movie starring Dolph Lundgren. (laughs) Yeah. Um, The the narration from the beginning was very much Rorschach. um, Yeah. It's it's someone... uh, Look, as far as an 80s adaptation of Moon Knight goes, solid. Did it well. Um, It's got an inexplicable glowing mask. Mm. Um, the acting could have been better all around the thugs are r- ludicrously over the top they go from being regular thugs to psychotic animal abusers and murderers for some reason in the back did of they, a taxi did they abuse an animal? Um, no but it seemed like they might have well, they killed a woman then <laughs> <laughs> whoops <laughs> um, yeah but they just they're very over the top not very good thugs not great thugs in my experience thugs don't admit to you know they're, they're enjoyable crimes w- w- just to taxi drivers one of my favourite parts is the man who engages this conversation by asking what did you do when he's being told by his friend what was done he says should we be talking about this I don't know Tom maybe you shouldn't have asked such a fucking awkward question in the back of a taxi well huh? maybe he wasn't expecting his friend to reveal that he'd been murdering prostitutes Surely this it's, isn't like, a- it's like if <laughs> I said to Shane in the back of a car so Shane what did you get up to ah you know murdered a few prostitutes Maybe I'd never admit that in front of a taxi driver. Exactly. And if you did, yeah. I would say, maybe we shouldn't talk about this here. Yeah. I thought that was probably the most Fair realistic enough. moment. In Fair enough. Uh, look, it wasn't great. I thought it was a noble effort. It was a noble effort. They really, um, they really went to work on the idea of Mark Spector being a split personality. and That wasn't actually bad. They, You know, it, it was, as a proof of concept of Moon Knight, it wasn't horrific. Yeah. I think, like... New costume. Yeah, they could have done a bit better on the costuming. But once again, better than the costume we made. We didn't make a costume. That's what I'm saying. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, Ben, by episode 200, 
this is what we're going to do. We're going to make that bloody Moon Knight film. That's ambitious. No, it's two years. We can bloody no, do episode it. 200 is ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after this fiasco. <laughs> You're the only one that got upset. There's a, okay, right. Here's the thing. If, if you haven't done it by episode 200, you have to do something. Yes. If we haven't made a Moon Knight film by episode 200, then we will have to... Ben will I'll have to watch... I'll with Shane. No, Ben will watch every episode of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. back to back. Oh, fuck. And... With no sleep? We, no, we'll have some sleep. Oh, he don't good. want to go insane. He'll watch them over the course of three or four weeks. And I'll live tweet them. And he'll live tweet the whole experience. <laughs> What's key to this forfeit is that it's fine for me because I quite like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because he has no taste. Yeah. Uh, that's nice. Um, anyway. Ben, tell us any... Is there any other news? I think that's it. Is that the thing? So... Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, because we've made it all the way to our hundredth episode, um, anybody that pays attention to our Instagram knows that we do a Monday Ben recommends, where I give you a comic book or a graphic novel or a trade paperback. Um, you don't actually give it to the people. No, I don't. But I give a recommendation mm. for for one of those things on the podcast. Uh, it could be Conan the Barbarian. It could be Saga. It could be. Um, an interesting look at uh, Arab culture clashing with the West. Like I didn't read that, Ben. Habibi. Is that good? Um, very good. Very mm. good. Um, you can borrow it from me if you like. Oh, well, thank but you. Um, taking that idea and running with it, we've decided to start a, a spin-off cast. Oh. Um, we're going to be doing a bi-weekly. Is it bi-weekly or bi-monthly? Is that how you say that one? Every two know. weeks. Every two weeks. Every two weeks. Um, we're going to be launching a new podcast um, and we will give you an announcement for... It's, it's going to be a book club, Michael. It's going to be a book club where we talk about uh, one graphic novel and we break it down over about 30 to 35 minutes oh, very in good. a podcast and we'll do it every two weeks. That sounds interesting, um, Ben. And in anticipation of this great moment, um, our first issue is going to be Injection by Warren Ellis and Declan Shelby. So run out and get yourself the first volume of Injection. How many... Is that a, is that a, uh, is that a series, Ben, or is it just... It is a, an, an image series, um, but we're just going to break down volume one. If you'd like to read the whole thing, mm-hmm. um, that's fine. You can go and do that. No restrictions here. But uh, we'll just be discussing volume one. And Ben, tell people to, to find us on Facebook. And sure, look, lads. Uh, Mick struggles with this part, so I'm going to show him how it's done. Um, we are on Instagram. So, do you not want to tell the oh, people about the... Did you say the name of the new podcast? I didn't say the name of the new did, podcast did because I wasn't certain that we, we decided... No, yeah, no, we're going with it. Uh, <laughs> Wait, which one are you going with? The, 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 say. Uh, collecting Issues is going to be the name of the new podcast uh, because on the back of every trade paperback it says Collecting Issues 1 to whatever. Oh, very good. Um, so we decided to do that and we've got a fair few issues. Um, Mick self suits. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. I'm a racist bigot that doesn't like homosexuality. And, oh, Jesus, um, man. We haven't really gotten into... <laughs> <laughs> we haven't really gotten into Shane, what Shane's into, but um, we can't really put that on a podcast. Um, so, yeah, that's that. But Collecting Issues will be launching uh, next Wednesday. Not No, sorry, not this Wednesday. The following Wednesday. Yeah. The following Wednesday. Wednesday, two weeks. May 22nd. Mm-hmm. Um, and tell them about the Facebook May 22nd. group. 22nd. Um, we will be starting a Facebook group where you can come and yes. chat with us for that. Um, you can also find our uh, current podcast, Michael and Benjamin's podcast, on Facebook. We are on Instagram if you want to get in touch with us. Let us know what you think of this idea. We'll be, uh, we'll be posting images there about the new podcast over the week we'd love to have a bit of engagement and let you know what we it should do we need new ones a coffee brewing downstairs so anyone wants to come around and just read while sitting here you can borrow his oh <laughs> <laughs> no don't come to my house come to Mick's house don't come to my house <laughs> yeah I won't be here so you can if you want um, but anyway we're, as always for the regular podcast ladies and gentlemen we are on Instagram we are on Facebook we are on iTunes give us an L review mm. preferably not calling me out as a racist but I'll take it <laughs> if it gets us a review um, we're on Spotify and we are on SoundCloud if you fancy seeing our faces do stuff on occasion we're on YouTube as well we're over there doing different call around things to Just call around or to my house apparently call around to Mix house don't do that ladies and gentlemen it'll freak him out and he will probably beat you up oh um, if I know you you can call around <laughs> a good portion of the people we know yeah they're, they're alright they can call around we'll, we'll have tea or something or for everyone who's given us a hand on the podcast over the last two years uh, getting us to episode 100 we want to say a massive thank you big thank yeah. you to Shane who came in yeah. today to, to yeah. banter yeah. with yeah. us for the entire yeah. day um, yeah. the absent Rachel who is always a wonderful guest to have on uh, to mix long suffering good lady friend <laughs> thank you very much for allowing me to your house every Sunday is very kind um, and to my poor parents who just don't know what their son's doing with their life I, I promise guys I'll get it together I'll get it together, get it together. Um, but that's it that's it from us for this week yeah. happy 100th episode everybody yeah. bye bye, bye. Happy Brenda. <laughs>